Hello there. All right. So this is academic uh, Sahabs who never left the academic Hindu phobia. Um, all right. Apparently that's a that's a thing. I guess. Well, a lot of people don't understand, don't li or fear what they don't understand. There's always been that, and it's always good. Let, let's face it. There will always be people out there who are afraid of what makes no sense to them. And instead of trying to rationalize or understand or discuss, it's all fear mongering, basically. Um, yeah, so uh, academic Hindu phobia. That's, uh, that's something I'd never heard of, but I guess there's phobia for everything. 1950s. Newly free India was caught in a trap. Unable to decide whether to join the capitalist pride or follow the socialist herd. After the dust had settled on the battlefields of World War II, the global stage was set for a power play. United States emerged as the undisputed leader of the global order. For every legendary... <laughs> That's funny hearing now. <laughs> because yes, yes, the... the Due to the actions taken and just the the advances through what had gone, what had happened, yes, the the United States came be, came on top. But it, it's easy to, to what is it? The higher you are, the further you have to fall. Yeah, it's it's so so funny to look back at how where we were and see wh where we are now. It we yeah. leader like Franklin. We are not worth following. Roosevelt or Harry Truman on the American side, there was a Lenin or Nikita Khrushchev on the side of the Russians. This Indian dilemma caused a very uneasy relationship with the USA. Private plane comes America's number one visitor. As an honor guard stands at attention, Prime Minister Nehru of India, accompanied by his daughter Indira, arrives for a state visit. And at a time when U.S. policy is expected to make a major shift toward emphasis on Asia. But something peculiar happened in 1950s. India signed multiple agreements with the United States. One of them was the Public Law 480. While this was meant to help America get rid of surplus food, it was not so positive for Bharat. It hurt India's economy, hindering its efforts towards self-reliance. To morally oh, compel and basically getting rid of our extra agricultural um, surplus. Other places weren't able to grow as much. I mean, that's one of the big issues with uh, su uh, supplying. People don't. Go what is it? You you give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day. You teach a man to fish and he'll eat for uh, all life. You give some. You give people the the tools they need defend for themselves you don't have them become reliant on you i think that's the issue that came out of this it was the uh, oh we have so much extra food let's just send it over instead of you know what we can teach you how to get to the point where you have so much extra food but and see this the usa provided loads of fellowships and book grants indian libraries were soon stocked up with american books turning the literary landscape into a virtual u.s colony well, it explains why the majority, like, it, no matter where you are, one of the languages spoken in every single territory is English. And out of all the languages there, it seems like everyone has one in common. And it's sadly not uh, one of the, the mainstays of India. It's English, which I guess is a mainstay since Britain was there for such a very long, long period of time. But what our public policymakers did not foresee was they had unwittingly welcomed communist ideology into the country under the garb of American literature. This subversive infiltration was like a cancerous growth that spread through the veins of our academic institutions. Well, it, yeah, ca cancerous growth, those ideologies are very toxic. Of course, right now, if you listen to the youth of the U.S. now, they're, they're all preaching that because, because it, is, it, it is nice to have that idea, the thoughts of that. It always sounds too good to be true, and when something sounds too good to be true, it, it normally is. Infecting the next generation of leaders and thinkers. Yep. These influences caused a transfer of civilizational guilt and Hindu phobia. 
Indian academics hired by American universities played a major role in fueling this negative perception. The Hindu phobia that emerged during this time had far-reaching consequences, shaping the global and local perspective of India as a primitive, pagan, underdeveloped and a weak state. This perception is still being... But that's the thing. It's like, I don't think it's underdeveloped. I just think people have their way of life. Like, heck, my father's from Mexico. And heck, there are huge portions of Mexico that are not the ideal vacation spots. But it's just how people grow up, how they're raised, how they've come to live their lives. Like, heck, I'll be watching something about certain aspects, and I'm aggravated at the fact that they're happy living like that. I mean, there's so much more, but there is one of those things where it's like you, you've you gotten used to how things are, the, the status quo, and there's no point in changing that if it doesn't benefit you in any way. Why would you push past? Why would you do more for your, yourself or for your people around you when you're happy and content where you're at? I mean, there is something... Uh, there is more happiness found in simplicity than there is in extravagance. Heck, there are more people who are happier when they're, you know, live by uh, below the means than those who have all the money in the world to do everything they want. And they're more unhappy because, well, they they can't seek happiness anywhere. They already can afford everything. There is no small little joys. But that's that's a, a different mindset, different thought process, different different m major topic. Being fueled by the sahibs who are subverting the brown population but are ultimately themselves subverted by the hidden hand of communism. It's almost like an inception of subversion or as- Yeah, the, the, what is it? The best way to control is to get the next generation. You, you, you give them these ideologies, you make them feel like you're doing what's best for them. It's all about what's right for you as a people. It's all for, and then you realize down the line that you've destroyed your own economy, you've destroyed your own nation. I mean, the U.S. will see that in a few more years. It, it, there's literally, you, you don't own your own nation. It doesn't belong to you anymore because you've given it up to, like, what is the excuse? Uh, like, I, I don't use TikTok, but on TikTok, there are, there are people just saying, print more money. I, I don't think how they uh, people understand how economics work and how the, like, the economy works in itself. If you print more money, what, what's going to happen? Everything's going to go up. Everything's going to go up in price, but you're just going to keep printing more money, and then we're going to get loans from other locations to cover our our debt, which is just going to get us more into... I mean, there's, there's a whole avenue of issues that come with the sheer misunderstanding of what is actually in time uh, pop whatever. culture would say everything everywhere all at once dang yeah um i, I that, that's a that's a that's a good one because it, it's 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 sad when people just because honestly it seems like a lot of this would have been better if people just understood each other learn to understand one another. Like, that's the thing I, I have issues. Uh, I even have get into discussions with people because, uh, like, even I will say something that apparently people will find offensive, but it, it goes both ways. <laughs> everyone everyone is offended by everyone else. It's, it's about not really taking offense and just trying to understand where that person's coming from or uh, it's seeing it as a teaching opportunity or things like that because there's oh, there's... There's always a different way of looking at things. You never want to be 100% authoritarian on any topic. Never. Absolutely never. Because eventually, uh, things might change. Maybe my eyes would be open. Maybe their eyes would be open. Maybe something will happen down the line and both parties were wrong. So it's best to just never 100% accuse anyone of anything it's best to try to talk with them understand where they're coming from and you could they could understand where you're coming from that's always been my understanding and my policy but it's it's insane when you like the the fact that people are giving up their own uh like like i said here people are giving up their own freedoms their own rights willy-nilly just uh just because it sounds nice <laughs> give up your what was it uh with the whole uh you know the whole uh, pandemic the the uh, give up your freedoms as long as you get to live i mean that that makes no sense <laughs> but yeah uh thank you all for watching talk to you next time toodles